This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. The old civilization of Hisui once encompassed the expanse of land where modern day Sinnoh stands today. Lacking the roots and towns that categorize the region's current day landscape, Hisui was split into five distinct areas in the Obsidian Fieldlands, Crimson Mylands, Cobalt Coastlands, Coronet Highlands, and Alabaster Icelands. Each of these were overseen by a Pokémon Lord, appointed by Arceus himself. After the events of Pokémon Legends Arceus and the subsequent capture of all the local deities, including God itself, by a local protagonist, the five noble Pokémon of the region suddenly vanished as their connection to Arceus was severed. But what's become of them over 200 years later? Join me as I take you on a journey across Sinnoh to find out. Starting our tour across the Sinnoh region, we have the resting place of the former Lord of the Obsidian Fieldlands. The Heartwood itself is long since gone, but the great Eterna Forest remains to the east. On my recent visit here to document the Hisuian decidui that call to the old chateau home, I noticed that a few of the majestic trees of the forest bore deep gashes that couldn't possibly be made by any of the weaker Pokémon normally found here. I doubt a Baneri would be capable of bisecting a whole tree trunk like this. At the time, I figured that the decidui must have done it somehow, but in hindsight, it could only be the resurrected Lord of the Forest. Following a trail of massacred foliage and splinters of shining black rock among the leaf litter, I found the ancient Pokémon standing in a clearing of its own making. Visibly altered from any other cleavor I'd seen, this Pokémon has undergone an evolution of sorts. Hundreds of years ago, when the power of Arceus was ripped away from it, the noble cleavor vanished from the Heartwood, seeking out deposits of Orgrite where it lay among the jagged shards and slumbered. The obsidian rock fused with the sleeping Pokémon and became plate armor, similar to those worn by the samurai that once roamed the land. The twin axes grew in length and became katana-like claymores, far too big for any other creature to wield, but no problem for Cleavor and its Herculean strength. Over time, oxygen seeped into the augurite and turned some patches a brick red. Eventually, the sleeping lord was roused from its comatose state and confusedly tried to find what was once its home, but only found a turner in its wake. Today, it's still looking for the heartwood and the arena it once called home, as well as its warden, who cared for it so dutifully 200 years ago. Leaving the ancient Cleavor behind, I decided to take a quick break from my expedition. Being so far from my home in Gala, though exciting, is pretty stressful. With Team Galactic around every corner, you could become the victim of theft at any moment. But thankfully, I've got just the solution. Surfshark VPN keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information sent between your device and the internet, keeping your personal data protected from big companies or cyber criminals. It can also change your location to make it look like your device is anywhere in the world. This is super useful when you're on the go because public Wi-Fi, free and convenient as it may be, is an absolute goldmine for hackers. So you can surf safer while you eat your croissant and drink your cup of tea. Croissant. Surfshark VPN isn't just for safety though. By changing your location, you can watch content that's made unavailable in your country. The funds never ogre with the power of Surfshark. On top of all this, they offer users total net privacy with alerts for data breaches, a fantastic antivirus, and even their own search engine. So don't wait! Use code COPPERFEE to get three months free. And if you decide to sign up, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk giving it a go. Join today using the link down in the description for an account to protect all of your devices and surf safely. Following my encounter with the Lord of Eterna, I headed across the city and into the echoing caves of Mount Coronet. After smashing more boulders than I could count, I emerged from the sacred Celestic Village and headed up the mountain towards the seat of the former Lord of the Coronet Highlands. The Crescent Arena has been silent for hundreds of years, the altar coated in a thick layer of lichen. I'd heard, however, that violent explosions had been heard echoing throughout the peaks, emanating from this sacred place. I felt my hair stand up on end as if I was in a lightning storm, and I was jolted by a sudden burst of electricity from above. Hisuian Electrode, the Lord of Coronet Mountain, also had fallen into a centennial slumber following the events of Legends Arceus. It had become enveloped into the boughs of the Great 
tree of its arena, sprouting thick vines from the vent on the bottom of its spherical body. The vines began to wrap around the tree, sprouting electrically charged explosive seeds, similar to those found on Japanese star anise of our world. Since the disappearance and subsequent discovery of the lost Unovan battle conductor, Emmet, Coronet has been a popular destination for battlers researching the lost trainer. At some point, one of the Unovan seems to have lost a Ferrothorn in the mountains, and upon waking up, it was the first Pokemon that the ancient lord set its eyes upon. Unfurling its new vine limbs from the tree, it began to mimic the movements of the Ferrothorn, stumbling around on three legs, hurling explosive star-shaped seeds at anything it deemed a threat. I was blasted from the arena, sent careening through the air into the frigid sky. Thankfully, I was caught by a conveniently placed star raptor and dropped unceremoniously into a snowdrift just off of Lake Acuity. I trudged into Snowpoint City, stopping at the Pokemon Center to warm up a little before I visited the next of the former Lords of Hisui. I borrowed some spare snow clothes and braved my way just north of the city, where local tectonic stations had been registering unusual seismic activity. Amid the howling winds of the snowfields, all of a sudden, I was thrust into the air as the earth itself rose. The ice and stone around me creaked and groaned as the Lord of Snowpoint City stirred from its slumber. The Hisuian Avalog of old was already vastly bigger than any other Pokemon in Hisui at the time of the loss of Arceus, and hundreds of years later, it has only increased in size. Blending seamlessly into the Arctic landscape, the earth and plants of the land have encompassed the vast Pokemon's back, changing Avalog's usually unusually flat back into a spiky mass of frosted pine trees. The titanic creature is thankfully calm in nature, but if angered is capable of triggering catastrophic natural disasters with its rock blasts. Thankfully, the Lord of Snowpoint City is presently calm considering its sudden reawakening, although it's only a matter of time before it could devastate the entire Snowpoint area. Following my close encounter with the Mammoth Monarch, I returned my snow-encrusted coat and boots to the Pokemon Center and boarded the SS Spiral into the battle zone a landmass to the northeast of the Sinnoh Pokemon League. Ignoring the regular requests for battle, which is very impolite, the residents did not approve, I climbed the arid slopes of Stark Mountain. The cold, crisp air of Snowpoint City a far cry from the sour sulfuric environment I was being subjected to now. Stealing my nerves, I pressed on towards the ruby glow of molten lava. A stone statue of an immense Arcanine sat next to the smoking pool of magma, guarding the entrance to the volcanic caverns. I approached it cautiously, almost as if it had read my mind. The immense stone statue creaked to life, shaking its stone mane and releasing showers of sparks that skittered across the rocks at its feet. The Arcanine's body was illuminated with smoldering magma from within, the crimson red seeping through the ornate swirls adorning its body. The fiercely loyal Arcanine was devastated upon awakening from its slumber. Its fiery body had cooled and hardened into rock, and the family it cared so much for had long since gone. And the only solace it had was the faint echo of its parent, whose ghostly presence still sometimes haunted the mountain. Firespit Island had changed completely from what the Lord of Stark Mountain had known, grown to become a part of a much larger landmass over years of volcanic eruptions. Lost without its family, Hisuian Arcanine sits and waits for its lost allies to return, unwilling to leave the former site of its arena in case its old friends could one day come back. I know what you're thinking. I've gone through every noble Pokemon of the Hisui region except one. So you think I'm gonna trudge all the way down to boggy old Pastoria City to see the Lady of the Crimson Mylands? Well, you'd be half right. We are going to see what became of the Hisui and Lilligant, although she's no longer in Pastoria City. She's not even in Sinnoh anymore. The elegant and free-spirited Lilligant was the only noble Pokemon to choose to free itself from Arceus's influence. Instead of slumbering for the past few centuries, this Pokemon left Hisui to travel the world ultimately deciding to make a new home for itself in the Johto region. Ekrutik is one of the most historic locations in the Pokemon franchise, home to a pair of celestial towers as well as a rich culture, particularly in its signature dancing. The kimono girls of the city have been dancing for centuries, and the dancer herself, Hisuin Lilligant, found herself completely enthralled by their graceful movements and applied herself to learning their craft. Today, the Lady of Ekrutik City has changed her appearance to match that of her kimono-clad peers and has adopted their movements into her signature style. I was lucky enough to secure tickets for a show and was hypnotized by the beauty of their dances. I was amazed that a Pokemon so old could have such life still in it. 
She twirled and skipped with the lightness of a morning breeze, and I felt rejuvenated just being in her presence. Unlike the other nobles, the Lady of Ecrutic City bears no shackles of the past and has become a Pokemon that fits perfectly within the modern era. The tour of the former Hisuian region to see what became of the lords and ladies was a huge success, giving us closure on the stories of Cleavor, Electrode, Avalug, Arcanine, and Lilligant. But there are still three whole lines of Pokemon from ancient Hisui that we haven't discovered yet in modern day, and I cannot wait to see what's become of them. But don't forget to like this video and subscribe to see what happens next. Click the link down below to get Surfshark VPN. But until then, join my Patreon to become part of the segment at the end of all of my videos. Hate it, little Phoebe. You helped me be the best I ever was To pay my rent, yeah, that's my cause Orgo 169, Clara, Avery, Jane, Matagomedy for 319 Edward White, Ryan McBee, Menko the Tea Maker Thank him, thank him, gotta thank him all Gotta thank him all, Patreon You say pimp, Rachel Lynn Immortal, Absol, Zachary Green E, X, Happy Face, Brandon Likes, N, Drew Gotta thank them all, gotta thank them all Gotta thank them all, gotta thank them all Gotta thank them all, Patreon Brent Kearney, Control 4, Alt Me, D, J, Cole, Leo 3 Nick, Charles, Lucas Gates, Lord Fellington, S, D, H that's all I got for this one. If you want in, join the Patreon.